This thing's about to be nasty. <laughs> We're gonna leave here and it's gonna be nasty. How nasty, Kevin? <laughs> it would be nasty. What's up, Life Right Nation? We are back. And the Jeep is almost sort of done. <laughs> well, so right now we're gonna throw, we've got everything on, right? That's where we left off. The long arm kit is all installed. The, the three brakes, link is installed. All the, the brackets brakes are, are on, on, brakes are on. Everything is back together. The only thing that isn't on it right now are the tires. Are the wheels and tires. And those are going on right now. Are literally going on as we speak. And as soon as those go on, what we're gonna do is we're basically going to articulate everything. And the reason that we're doing that is so that we can check all our clearances. Right, so from here, we'll be able to get all the clearances, look for mechanical clearances, any kind of interruptions, and then we'll be able to find out exactly how much droop we have and how much up travel, where yep. it's at our bump stops. Oh, we're finally going, show them this. We're finally oh. going to air bumps up front. Air bumps! Rad Flow, <laughs> super awesome, sent us some customized air bumps per rock crawler specification. I don't know if I want to tell you what the secret sauce in that is. Maybe we'll go over it, maybe we won't. But we've been waiting for air bumps for a long time. Um, we kind of treat this thing really badly off-road and the and rubber- Kevin has a Hemi and likes to hit bumps <laughs> yeah. and jumps and the... whoops way faster than he should. Yeah, the rubber ones weren't keeping up anymore. <laughs> so it was time for some big boy air bumps. Now remember our goal at this point is we do want to try to continue to use the six pack shocks. So what we're going to do at this point is see if they'll even work. <laughs> no, you're fine. Hold on, I got grease everywhere. No, you look fine. You he look said like I got. I look like Tonto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're okay. Good. Okay. So Jeremy, explain to me right now. So we're about to lower the stepchild for the first time back yep. onto the ground. We're actually going to physically lower the entire vehicle to check for mechanical clearance and interference. And this is the first step in measuring for your initial bump stop measurement. And then okay. you do the same thing for full articulation on each side and check that dimension. And then your longest dimension for the bump stop that you need is the dimension you go with. Okay, so that first, and then we basically continue from there. Absolutely, this is step one of three on the final setup. Fantastic. Now keep in mind, this is without shocks or springs or anything right now. What we're doing is we're lowering it without any of those so that we can actually test the full compression of the vehicle right now. And the reason we're doing that is because we wanna figure out where that interference is, basically what's hitting first. And from there, we can adjust the bump stops. Now this isn't involving articulation. This isn't how the vehicle is gonna articulate. If you're rock climbing or something, we'll be able to get more stuff out of it and all that jazz. But for now, this is, Imagine this. Imagine sending the stepchild off of a dune and coming down on all fours and you compress everything past the springs, past the shocks, and straight through bottoming out the bump stops. That's what this is for. This is making sure that we don't obliterate something if we do something really dumb. So this is basically to get the proper measurements to set that at and from there we can start working on everything else. Okay, so on the front end here, the very first interference we have is going to be the stock uh, factory upper control arm mount on the axle coming in contact with the Hemi oil filter housing. You can see we're getting very, very, very close right here. Um, so we can't go any higher up with this. If this had the stock 3.6 in here, that oil filter housing is not there. And we'd actually have more up travel, uh, more full compression. All the arms, everything's clearing. We could, uh, we'd have a bit more, but the Hemi right now is gonna be in the way. So until we get an oil filter relocation or something, we're gonna have to bump stop it here because of that. So not a big deal. It's just, uh, it just is what it is. Maybe 42s are, uh, are the answer. Brittany can't hear me say that, so that's cool. Okay, so our mechanical interference up front was both of our upper mounts for our upper control arms. On the passenger side, it was hitting the oil filter housing on the Hemi. 
and then on the driver's side mount, it was hitting the AC compressor. So those were our mechanical limits, where were actually the mounts that are on the top of the axles. So we had to bump for that, and right now we're at five inches of bump stop, but that's only because we swapped to these air bumps, which sit higher up in the, uh, in the spring housing here. So in the spring perch. So with these air bumps set where they're at, That's good. we are at five and we're probably gonna actually go to five and a half inches. So what rock crawler is gonna do is they're gonna machine us a piece of billet aluminum that's gonna be five and a half inches tall and that'll get bolted down in place of those pucks. So it's a hard air bump striking a hard surface so there's no give because we're cutting everything well within about three quarters to an inch of striking anything that could be detrimental. All right, so now that we've basically found our limitations under full compression, the next step would be to go and articulate everything and continue to look for any type of mechanical interference. Hey, y'all want to see what springs with no shocks looks like? <laughs> you ever wondered why shocks are so important on a vehicle? You know, when you or see what that, they do? You know when you see that old car going down the road on the highway and it's just sitting there doing this? <laughs> it's because their shocks are blown out. I've seen cars doing that too. Wow, wow, wow. Houston? We have a problem. I oh, know. <sighs> so we have the new brackets on the axle and the new brackets raise up super high. With the long arm kit, it comes with a new bracket that wills to the frame for the new shock mounting location. <sighs> so that, pro that poses a new problem because right now we're at full droop. And if I go to bolt this up, look how far off we are. The shock is not long enough. Oh no. Yeah. The shock's not long enough. So, unfortunately, our six packs won't work with this kit. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, oh, there's just no. nothing we can do because I mean. Well, you can see, like, mount that back up. Okay. So, you can see it matches almost pretty much exactly where our limiting straps used to be. Because this is where our full droop or almost full droop used to be, was where these old limiting straps were. However, we now have the capability of that much more droop. this much more droop now with this new kit we have that much more downward travel which means yeah the shock's not long enough these are no longer decent which means we need different shocks yeah so like now now these don't work which really sucks because yeah because originally that was the plan we wanted to run the six pack shocks with the rock crawler long arm kit because i don't know i feel like that would have been super duper bad but we just found out that's not gonna work. But is what it is. When you're changing stuff up, you have to kind of work with what you're doing. I'm still super pumped that we didn't really have to make any modifications whatsoever to our metal cloak undercloak skids. And obviously we're still able to run our metal cloak rock sliders as well. So we just need new shocks though, is the route we gotta go now. Yeah, that sucks. All right, so now what we had to do is measure our new distance for our new shocks because they're gonna have to build a shocks. Today's the last day, it's Friday, we gotta be out of here. So we're gonna measure from the new mounting point up top to our mounting point in the bottom. And when we did that, we actually found out that what we need to do is lift the vehicle another inch and that's gonna give us more up travel and we can go with a longer shock so then we can also get more down travel. So it's gonna, overall, it's gonna Actually be better. Kind of a yeah, good thing. overall, it's gonna be better. Um, and for those of you that wonder, well, okay, you're gonna raise the Jeep an inch. Oh, now you're raising your center of gravity. Not quite, because we've added so weight much, down low. Right. So, so as you raise a vehicle, of course, your center of gravity raises up with that. But with our big axles, with the new truss down here, with the new long arm, so we're adding weight to the vehicle, we're adding all the weight underneath to the frame into the axle not to the body so the cool thing is is that now we can uh, we'll have more down travel and more up travel than we had prior which it, is right so silver lining we're good no it, it is but that's all only because we're raising it higher which yeah. before i never wanted to do i liked how it was but this is what we have to do now to optimize what we have going yeah. on to so. take full advantage of what we're doing yeah but that also means something super cool when it comes to going fast off-road 
What? It means that we can go faster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It means we'll be able to hit bumps and whoops and whatnot a lot faster without worrying about bottoming out either down low or topping out up high on the rebound. So those are all good things. All very good things. I would say that that is not a bad amount of droop. Yeah, so that's, our, that's, our, that's our, you're going to get our new droop in the rear is what it looks like. That's a heckin' lot of down travel right there. Yeah, that's going to be at least three to four inches. About another three to four inches. Okay, so now while Rock Crawler is getting our new shocks built, this does mean, however, that Kevin now has to go in and cut away our old factory shock mount in the front of the Jeep. So we gotta do that and weld the new ones. frame cutting remember the part we were talking about no turning back once you go this route this is pretty much this is pretty much it there's no going back now so kind of like with me you're stuck oh no in your decision <laughs> damn it what did i do <laughs> it's hot in here i'm like literally sweating hey what i'm proud of you you didn't cut yourself you didn't cut any wires you know i'm only halfway done only halfway done. That's a good point. There's number two. That one's actually a lot better. The first one I kind of oh, mangled. That. That's so smooth. Yeah, the first one I kind of mangled. Yeah, I don't think I cut through any brake lines or anything. Oh, that's good. All right, now that I cut the old brackets off the frame, no going back. Remember, this is only moving forward. These are the new brackets. Woo. So the these baby. these will actually bolt in. So you have two bolts here, and then we'll drill holes up on the, on the top. top. Yeah, on the top shot. up here. This will get bolted down, and now we can mount our big boy shock coil over. And then here's for the remote reservoir. We'll sit right in here, shock tucked right away. Now. Right. Right now we are doing a shock. Yes, we're not doing but coilovers. But this sets us up potentially, if we want to in the future, for coilovers. We could run a coilover. Right. So this super dope. This okay. will come sit right in here. Yep. It comes right up. up right up here like this and we're, then we're so close so close so much to do but and it's so cold so in here. close i just want to tell everyone if you've been wondering why i've been wearing this plus this which by the way is heated uh that's because it's like six degrees outside out there um ever according to my phone it feels like negative 12. fantastic So now with the new shock towers bolted in up front, we figured out that our American Adventure Lab inner fender liners were no longer going to fit like they were, but I don't want to go without inner fender liners. So JD and I yep. did a little bit of measuring and ta-da, look, look at that. <laughs> and it fits perfectly around the shock tower so you can actually see the RK, you can see the shock, you can see the whole tower, but all the other junk around it is still hidden and protected against all the weather and mud and other nonsense. High five! <laughs> but I think what's even more awesome is our shocks are finally done being built. So we're gonna go grab those right now. All right guys, so this is what we have going on. This is our new shock. And as you can see, there's a bit of a difference between mounting surfaces. We did go an extra inch higher. So now we're at five and a half inches of lift all the way around, which will get us more up travel, more down travel, more just fun all around. We can go faster without bottoming out. We did add air bumps up front. Now we are just going to the nitrogen shock with uh, reservoirs, with remote reservoirs. No coil All right, everybody, let's finish strong. Let's freaking, uh, we got the... Yeah, we let's got do the it, shots dude. back there. Yeah, yeah, I got some more shots back here. So anyway, no coilovers, guys. <laughs> Hold on, cut. Take five. So no coilovers, guys, and there's a good reason. Everybody parrots. It's like a parrot effect where everybody wants to just coil over, coil over, and they hear coil over. Coilovers are not for everybody. Coilovers are for some people. They're but, not the end all be all. Right. You can get a great shock spring combo that will keep up or outperform a coilover. Maybe not this exact setup. Maybe something with uh, bypasses, you have a shock, external bypass with remote resi, and the right spring combo. 
But anyway, for right now, this is what we're going. The reason we're not going coilovers is because the amount of weight that we carry back here. All that stuff over there, the 40 inch spare tire. So if we dial a coilover in for this kind of weight and then we get out to say King of the Hammers or we go out somewhere and, and I unload, unload. I unload my spare for more, uh, for more departure angle and I take all that out of there, that is so much weight that the, the, my spring rates and ride height and everything would be through the roof. So coilovers are very, very, very uh, sensitive to weight. When you're throwing hundreds of pounds in and out of the Jeep, I would have to change spring rates and preloads. Every single every, time. Right, every single time. So what we might do, maybe, possibly, in the future is go coilovers up front because my front weight is set, right? It doesn't I've got, change. I've got the Hemi, I've got the transfer case, I've got the transmission, I've got the bumper, and I've got the winch. Everything weight-wise up front is set. So it would make sense to go coilovers with bypasses in the front and then stick with springs in the rear with shocks, with resis, with separate bypass. So that's what we plan on doing, maybe. Eventually. Maybe. That's the end all be all if we have it my way. But we're gonna start here and see what happens. Yeah, for now we're gonna stick with this in the rear. Right. And then the front will also have those right there. <laughs> So when modifying vehicles over and over and over again, you run into all these little issues because like what would be a normal install time on a completely stock vehicle, you can double, triple, quadruple that time because everything you've already done is going to be in the way. <laughs> Such as my airlines. Our just airline this, bulkhead. Just this little tiny bulkhead that I figured would be out of the way, tucked way up in here. Guess what? Gotta move it for the reservoirs. Gotta move it for the reservoirs. So even little things like this that the you don't- The more you modify your vehicle, the harder subsequent installs become. Yeah. Or at least more time consuming. Not necessarily harder, it's just little things start popping up here and there. Which honestly, I will say this, for, for how little is still stock underneath this vehicle, I've actually been very surprised that we've not run into more of this. Here's the deal is that we're with a bunch of extremely competent people who oh, are able true. who are able just to go, oh, all right, here we go, and just Boom, bang, done. knock it out. Yeah, that's true. So we're going to instead move our rear bulkheads back here on the inside of the frame where it's completely out of our way and hopefully out of the way of everything else. I've heard the good noise. <laughs> put the shock bolts from this direction so when you hit rocks and stuff if it's going through this way you'll screw up your threads and you'll never get it off so I put it through this way because if you screw this up you can always put a grinder on it All right, now that we have all the suspension in, as you can see, looking all good, now we have to mess with caster. So we measured, we were way too far. I think we were at like 11 degrees, 10 degrees, yeah. 10 and a half degrees of caster. So we had to dial that way back. Mm -hmm. And what happened was we went off the manufacturer's suggested length, but my Dynatrack axles were already rotated for Real like caster. four and a half degrees of caster. So we had way too much caster. Six and a half plus the four. Right, yeah, so now we have to come now we have to come off with everything and readjust. So we're adjusting the lower links back to roll that back and dial it back to about six and a half, seven and a half degrees. And then once we're done with that, we'll be done. We're so close. All right, so in one of the earlier videos, we really went over all of the benefits that you get from a long arm kit, but now we can actually physically show you. Before, I showed you what the droop looked like and how the factory mid arm actually, once it drooped out, it pulled the axle backwards and the spring was super, super curved back. But now you can see we've drooped out 
significantly further than we were before and you can still see how much more linear the spring here is and how much more linear the entire axle is it's basically centered and that's what's really going to help to reduce the axle steer when we get off-road but that is freaking incredible <laughs> that's gonna be awesome now to go along with all of our new suspension we also have these bad boys which are your no limit sway bar inlinks so if you're looking for anything super beefy, I'm a little... <laughs> that's, that's, that's it's a... almost, almost, th oh, it might be thicker than my wrist, but I have really tiny wrists, but still, that's... <laughs> we don't go worry about bending or breaking these. No. <laughs> and you get to dial them oh, into so exactly... Oh, yeah, you dial them into exactly what you need and what you want. Yeah. Fuck! There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon Catch me howling at the moon got beers in their hand it like we're so, done but it looks so good it Dude. came out so good i mean it oh just it, it looks like a raised stepchild you can't really until you start looking at stuff which i'm sure she showed you in b-roll oh it looks so good and i bet you it's gonna perform even better we're so excited to get it on the road because that's the next step is now that we've got it all installed we have to test it out we have, we have to, to test out it. our all new rock crawler long arm and three link kit Let's, wait what we're gonna go jump it i'm in <sighs> See? I'm in. See? Don't encourage him. Now I'm awake. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't encourage this. Yeah, well, jumping in. It looks like that's what's yeah, happening next. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> you'll have to wait yeah. until next time for that because <laughs> oh. it's late. I'm going to go to bed. I have a she video edit. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Light Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com. All of your Light Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. And don't forget about E3 Off-Road. And remember, you can head on over to rockcrawler.com forward slash lightbright to learn a whole lot more about suspension in general by getting a sneak peek at some of our E3 Off-Road videos that we shot while we are here at Rock Crawler. Guys, we love you so much. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye! Peace. Bye, bye, bye. Bye! <laughs> 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 All right, you guys, so we are almost done with the stepchild. We have a little bit more left, one yeah. day's worth of work left. Well, I might have just added another day's worth of work because of stuff I wanted to do, maybe. We might have to stay through the weekend. So today's like Thursday. It's eight degrees outside. There's snow two days ago. But we decided to order some pizza and some drinks. And, and invite people to come hang out. We're like, surely no one's going to come anyways because <laughs> yeah. it's like freezing balls cold outside. And we were dead wrong because look <laughs> at how many people came out to say hello. Guys, that's so cool. They, <laughs> on, a, on a Thursday night. Uh, freezing it's, cold it's outside. freezing cold outside. It's snow outside. It's cold. And they're like, some of y'all aren't even wearing jackets. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, well, I don't really get it. Guys, but, thank you so much for coming out and saying hi. This is this right here. This is why we do everything that we do. It's super because awesome. of them and because of you.